Okay, I was sanding along, and now I got this. I got water coming out of the skeg right there. Leaking down to there, dropping off the bottom. So we're gonna drill a hole, see what happens here. Two years ago, we purchased a hurricane damaged boat with the dream of sailing her around the world. Together with our kids, we've been learning, laughing, and working to make this dream come true. This is the story of our adventures on a sailboat named Spoon Drifter. Just used a fairly large piece of the cloth. This is nylon fabric we are using as peel ply. It's cheap and easy to buy locally and helps the epoxy lay down nicely, allowing for less sanding. Probably because it's an inside curve instead of an outside curve. <laughs> the direction I'm pulling it, you know, stuff tears better one way than the other. The water draining from the skeg in last week's episode was from some small osmotic blisters that had formed due to the cracks in the gel coat. Todd drilled and sanded them open, rinsed them several times with fresh water, and refilled them with thickened epoxy. We want to give a big shout out to our amazing patrons who have cheered us on and shared our ups and downs behind the scenes each week. Thank you so much. Good morning. We are working at getting here at the boatyard bright and early every day. We are trying <laughs> to get this boat in the water so we want to get our full day's work in. You already too warm? What? You're already too warm? I didn't want to get my coat nasty with stuff. I'll work and get warm here. So what are we doing? Well, I gotta, I gotta do that. So I thought I'd grab these. I don't know if they'll work or not. But grab those. What are those? You're gonna paint? You grab a belt sanding belt, wrap it around the can like that. You know what I mean? That's a big angle right here. It fits pretty good. But anyway, it was an idea to try to maybe try to keep some of the radius. Seems like a lot of work. Well, it's all a lot of work. It's just all a lot of work. So what is our goal to get done today? Well, we want to sand and prep the rudder, sand and prep this a little bit, and then we're gonna dry fit the rudder because we don't have any idea how the alterations we made after inspecting the rudder are gonna work with the skeg. And so I have to make it fit and we want to have the tolerances tight enough that um, barnacles aren't growing, but I need to make sure that I didn't overbuild it and it'll actually go up into place, which is a real pain on this because it was like impossible to get out. So I'm hoping, hoping that the alterations we made were the right ones. Rather than have the yard pick up our boat to fit the rudder, because it costs money, we have opted to dig a hole deep enough to set the rudder in and lift with rope, straps, and come-alongs. Okay, you guys are just going to kind of guide it in the hole. 
There's our hat bushing. That goes there. And that goes there. We had this bushing milled by Don Green from Mary Marine. You can find him on Facebook. Okay, pull it up for you a little bit. Yes, there we go. It's not going. Well, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. There we go. That's pretty much there. Apparently, it's not me. Yeah. I think it's got to go almost all the way down. It's 70 inches to the top of this post. So, 69 inches. So, right there is where it'll come out of the boat. <laughs> okay, so, so we got a little. We got a foot to go before we got a problem. A little more. It's coming down. Okay, we're really close to coming in completely out, Steve. So I'll let you just work your end. And Dave, we gotta keep this from falling. You got Steve's there. There we go. Set your end down. Just set your end down. Just like that. Okay. That's right here. Pull that rope out from underneath, Dave. This rudder is extremely heavy, and I'm so grateful that Steve was willing to help us okay. with this project right. because, well, so, I just am not up to the task. Ah. Wait, wait, down a little bit. Yeah. Hold it up a little bit. There you go. All right. Grab that. All right, hang on. I gotta get a step up. And go forward a little bit. And another step. All right. Okay, let's go ahead and stand it up, Gabe. Put your end down. Brace it, Gabe. Brace sort of the slide off. There you go. Stand straight up. Okay, we want to have that board right under the center of that. So we'll go back that way. Slide you. Okay. Good. I think you got it. I think you got it. We dry fit our rudder because um, we wanted to make sure everything fit. We had all the clearances that we needed. The little shoe hat bushing on the bottom was correct and wasn't too big or too small. And what, what we discovered was, uh, well originally when we pulled it out it was really tight coming down. And um, we figured there was some barnacles in here stopping that. Going back up though we also hit a tight spot that was rubbing on the rudder. So if you look at this, now this this fairing here was this fairing here was actually still a little bit um, it wasn't fully cured when we put it up. It was it was hard, but it was still tacky. I could scratch it with my fingernail, so you, that's why it's a little rough. But right here and right here, from about here up, clear up to here. Well, it's clear up to here. It's rubbing right there. I got a line right here. And you can see how it's kind of messed up the fairing right there and it's rubbed through right here. So on the skeg here, I feel a bump right here. It could be causing part of that. I'm trying to find on this side, I don't see anything on this side that's, that's causing it. 
but I'm going to sand this down a little bit. Hopefully it'll keep it a little bit better as it goes up next time. Although we're going to build it up with a lot of paint, so there's going to be a little bit more that's, that's going to grab, but boy, it's, it's really tough when it grabs. Um, dust particulate mat, mask it stops COVID, so it's definitely going to stop this dust. Fiberglass. It's usually what fairing does, but the uh, the weave in the fiberglass is a little rough. I think I'm going to have to fair it one time and sand it really lightly to, to feel that how rough that is right there. I can feel all the weaves, but the fairing is smooth, so. But we've shaped it now. Shaped it so hopefully I got minimal, minimal rub on the skeg going up. I hope, we'll see. <laughs> okay, we're gonna start painting the bottom of the boat. And you can see that there's white. And that white is an interlux barrier coat, epoxy barrier coat. And so before we can start using the total boat, total protect, we have to wash this with soap and water and then sand it with 80 grit paper, scuff it up, and then wipe it down before we can start painting. So we're gonna try and get this prepped tonight so we can start painting tomorrow. Thanks for watching to the end. If you'd like more exclusive content, come join us on Patreon. And as always, we'll see you next week.